pastor of Emmanuel United Church of Christ in Catonsville, and I'm here as a representative of the Central Atlantic Conference of the United Church of Christ. I lived in Louisville, Kentucky for seven years before I made it up here. The church I served and my house were less than five miles away from a 13-story coal ash pile belonging to the Louisville Gas and Electric Company and the Kentucky Utilities Company, situated less than 500 yards away from the Ohio River, Louisville's primary aquifer. Y'all, I lived in a place where the rain was brown and I had a white car. I wanted to know why. I found out real fast if you want to be healthy, you really don't want to live in the Ohio River Valley where you can get stuck with the same air for days and days and days. When the wind would finally shift away from us and blow across the river into Indiana, LG&E would blow out the stacks to clear out the residue and you could see the brown trail stretching across the sky for over 50 miles. My church members were mostly blue collar folks who spent their lives in the area close to those smoke belching stacks of the power plant. Their cancer rates were 10 times higher than the rest of the nation and y'all I got tired of doing funerals. The asthma rates of the kids in my church and my neighborhood were sky high, and I finally got to the point where I really wanted to know why. And I learned a hard truth fast. There's no such thing as clean coal, and when it kills, it's ugly. In less than six months, I began developing recurring respiratory problems that I never experienced before. When I finally got referred to a lung specialist, I couldn't believe what that guy was telling me. He took one look at my x-rays and that doctor asked me how long I'd been smoking. Y'all, I don't smoke. I never have. But my lungs look like the muddy waters of the Ohio River. I've lived here for almost three years and it's taken this long for my respiratory system to get closer to being normal. But I'm still living with that damage. My sermons are shorter because I run out of air. Now some of my church members are kind of happy about that. <laughs> But y'all, I'm tired of coal wrecking the health of the people I care about and serve. I'm tired of the poorest of the poor living and trapped by industrial pollution with no place to go and no place to hide and no place to pray and no place to play. When more and more kids have to live with inhalers, something's wrong. It's not right. And it's not fair. And who are we to begin to think of that as normal? The people of Maryland deserve better than this. All of us do. From the greatest of the great to the lowest of the low. And then I got a little more ticked off. As I found out that BG&E gets its coal from West Virginia where a mountain used to be. And it makes me mad enough to use language that doesn't even come close to being prayer. Although it sort of does reference God in unofficial ways. Here's the simple theological truth. The air doesn't belong to us. God only created it once. Whatever we throw into it is eventually going to fall down. It doesn't stop at city limits. It doesn't stop at state lines. And it doesn't stop across national boundaries. I am profoundly grateful and proud to call Maryland my home. Every single person across this state is my neighbor. And we need to take care of each other. 
If air quality standards are lessened, Baltimore skies aren't going to be blue for very long. And most of us are going to get sicker faster and stay sicker longer. And I'm going to be stuck with more funerals. Until the day comes when fossil fuels are a distant memory, the damage we do today will determine the quality of people's lives across generations. There isn't a person in this room today who I believe is willing to sacrifice the health and welfare of their neighbors. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. You have the power to lift public welfare above the profit margins of the coal industry. MD&E, you can save us from a misguided policy of our governor, so I have one prayer and one request of you today. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't take my breath away.